a meal planning calendar. What the heck is that and how does it work? It sounds scary, right? Give me a thumbs up below because this is what I used to do. I used to fear meal planning. I hated the thought of even doing it. And so what I did instead was I succumbed to the fact that I was just going to go to the grocery store, throw random items in my cart, and then hope for the best when I got home. <laughs> and it doesn't work, right? My kids are in school. We're here, there, and everywhere. They're ages 1 through 10. And I'm sure you're busy too because you're watching this, trying to get better at meal planning. And life is crazy, right? We can't just throw a bunch of things in our cart, bring it home, and just hope that we have all the ingredients to make something edible. I'm not a cook. So this is gonna be a five-step plan to making a meal planning calendar. And it's amazing, okay? It saved my life, literally, I think, because I hated it so much. So if you're like me and you feel like meal planning is just a headache, I have great news for you. This is the exact five-step system I use for my meal planning calendar. It's so easy. I want you to stay tuned because I wanna make your life easier. And here's a quick glimpse of what you'll learn. That's it. <laughs> you gotta stay with me through the video. So if you're new to my channel, my name's Erin Cook and I help busy people that work way too hard and that sounds like you, right? I help you enjoy your life again by simplifying the things you do every day and also help redefine success and conquer success according to your terms, not to anybody else's. I want you to be happy with your life. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks and I'm gonna help you do that. So stay tuned, subscribe to me here and we do these trainings every week and I would love to make your life simpler, but stay tuned for my five-step easy meal planning calendar. All right, so let's hop to it. The very first step that you're going to do is if you've had my Find Your Free Time course, you're going to get your Find Your Free Time schedule out and go ahead and see what days of the week coming up you have to vary your schedule. And what I mean by that as far as eating times. If you have a day where you know everybody's gonna be home late or there's a day that you can't cook, a day that you might have to eat out, let's say you are taking your kids to gymnastics and you won't get home till eight o'clock. Are you gonna make peanut butter sandwiches and eat them in the car you know how are you gonna make dinner are you gonna have dinner already prepared for you on that day so you can come home at 8 o'clock and just eat it how's that gonna work for you so that's the very first step is getting your schedule onto your meal plan and if it's you know a normal night where you're just gonna eat regular dinner after you cook it great but if it's something special I want you to note it so in our house Thursday night we're not gonna be home I'm gonna plan on doing leftovers in my house I make a lot of um, extra we use a lot of it for lunches the next day my husband takes to work the kids takes to school I eat at home so we're good with leftovers but by Thursday after it rolls around because I start my meal plan on a Sunday we have a lot of extra food so I'm gonna write down on my schedule first step Thursday is gonna be leftovers okay and I'll just note that you can do this on a planner you can do it on a calendar you can do it on a paper you can do it on a dry erase board whatever floats your boat it doesn't have to be fancy okay but this is how I plan my meals Sorry for the handwriting, I hope you can read it. <laughs> okay, so that's leftovers. So I'm not gonna schedule a meal for that day, but I do plan meals for every other day of that week, okay? So that's easy, right? You can do that. But the next thing I want you to do before you start making out what you're going to actually prepare for those days, go into your pantry and do an inventory. So not only the pantry, I want you to inventory the things that are going to go bad or that you want to use up for the next week. So it's gonna be pantry, fridge and freezer okay we all know that when we hit that big sale on ground beef we put some in the freezer and then we forget about it we'll pull that out use it up <laughs> you're gonna be able to not have to throw that away because it sat in there so long so let's say that we went to our cupboards and we found that we need onions up how about cheese and I don't know uh, I buy those big packs of chicken in bulk so we always seem to have chicken laying around that I have to use up okay so you're just gonna take an inventory and put it on a paper while you're doing this so you can reference it while you're making out your meal plan okay so that's step number two is inventory you got this right we're already at two out of the five steps so you can do this so step number one look at your schedule figure out what days you have to have some special type of meal plan other than cooking and eating and then go ahead and, and do your inventory all right step number three I don't know about you like I said I am NOT a chef I don't know a lot of recipes but I do like to go on Pinterest <laughs> and I'm sure many of you do as well so if you're on Pinterest and you have recipes what I do is I categorize them into their proteins I like to meal plan with protein as as the main dish you don't have to do that you can do it however you want to if veggies are your thing go ahead and 
categorize them however you want to, or maybe you're vegan or gluten-free, however you need to organize your meals, that's great. But that's the easiest way for me to find them. Um, we also have a child that is allergic to a lot of different foods, so we have his own category of special things as well. But for this purposes, I'm just gonna do the regular family meal plan, okay? So go ahead and reference your recipes. That's not only Pinterest, but you're gonna keep that in your head because I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later. But also, and I'll put that on here, I'll put online. If you have an online recipe place that you go to, if you have books, cookbooks, and then also, I want you to pull your family members or whoever you're going to be cooking for as well. We want their input. What are your favorite things to eat? If you have picky kids like I do, what are their favorite things to eat? What, what can you make that you know that they will eat and not waste? And then maybe you can put it in their lunches for school, things like that. So pull your family and you're gonna get a whole list. I know that tacos are huge, spaghetti, they love barbecue chicken and pork. So things like that. You're just gonna have this running list with you and it can be on paper, it can be online. You can put keep a notebook for your meal plans any way you wanna organize this, but this is just the process. All right, so we're three out of five. Super easy, okay. Now we're gonna head to making your actual calendar and it sounds overwhelming, it's not. So for example, we're gonna take this for one week. You can again do this for a whole month, however far out you want to plan. I do it weekly because I grocery shop weekly. I need a lot of produce and I want it fresh. So that's why I do it by the week, okay? So now we're gonna look back here. And the first thing I like to do is to go to my list. What do I need to use up? Okay, so here I've got onions, cheese, and chicken. Well, I know my kids love tacos, right? Cause that's on the list of fa family favorites. Can I make that, you know, with the stuff that I have in the pantry? Onions and cheese are going bad, so I put those in tacos. So I'm gonna write tacos up here. Now, let me go back one more time because I wanna give you a little tip before you do this that might help you. It might not, you don't have to do this. This is something I do before I even get to doing the filling in of the recipes. I actually go through and I categorize again by protein. I know we like beef and chicken are our favorites. We also like pork and turkey once in a while. So this is what I'm gonna do just for example this week. So I'm gonna write down here, this will be a beef dish, chicken dish, we'll do pork, and turkey and we'll just do another beef and chicken okay just for example you can mix that up any way you want to that just helps me stay more organized and i know that we like those things and they're often able to be purchased in bulk so before I start my meal plan, I actually just do that with the proteins to say, okay, this date, this date, this date, whatever. Okay, so back to the beef. <laughs> Tacos, we're gonna have that that night. What I like to do now when I filled out this, just this one thing, I do it as I go along, what are the ingredients that I need to have tacos that night? Let's say we're having tacos and a, a fruit because tacos are, you know, I don't wanna get like potatoes or something else heavy with tacos. My kids don't like a lot of Mexican, but they do like fruit. So if we have tacos and fruit. What do I need to buy at the store? So I have the onions and cheese, so I need beef. You're gonna start a grocery list. So this is number four and five going hand in hand. Beef and how much? We need two pounds for our family. I know I need seasoning, but I have that already. I've got onions and cheese for that that I can use up. And you need taco shells and we use hot sauce. If I don't have those ingredients, I write them down for my shopping list. See how easy that is? Okay, so then we move on and, and then whatever fruit it is. Um, usually I'll just buy whatever's on sale that week. We love fruit, so we're, we're pretty open to whatever kind of fruit it is. So you don't have to have absolutely everything, but make sure if you need a fruit for that side dish, go ahead and put it on your grocery list. Um, chicken, let's say uh, we make chicken parm and we make it without the breading. So I would use my chicken and some more cheese. Now I would say to myself, self, do I need more cheese at the store? <laughs> or is this enough to use up for that dish as well? So you're always gonna keep a running total of what you need over here. Let's say that I went over to my beef and I was going to have lasagna, because we like that too. How many pounds of beef I need to buy at the store? So I would probably need another like one to two pounds. I'd probably go on the two pound side because my little boy can't have lasagna, so I just make him ground beef with some seasonings that he can have. So you'll just keep a running total. And then, once you get this all filled out, so let's fill it out real quick. And this would be like a chicken Caesar salad. Turkey, we like meatloaf, made out of turkey. My kids love meatloaf, isn't that awesome? 
That's like one of the only things I can make without a recipe <laughs> besides tacos. <laughs> and the pork, we do barbecue pork a lot. So then I have my meal plan, right? And you can do this with side dishes as well. But can you see how by making an inventory checklist of things that you already have in your pantry or your fridge or your freezer, can you can use those things up and it's gonna save you t not only time of figuring out what to make, but also money. And like I said, you're not gonna have to throw away things that you have purchased already. And it's so easy. Like you can, when you see what you have here as far as inventory, if you're not quite sure what you can make with them, head back to your recipes. And that's where you're gonna look to see what ingredients you're gonna need, but you can also just get ideas, especially if you're on Pinterest and you say, okay, I wanna make, I don't know, something with chicken and I don't know what to make, just go to your chicken board. If that makes sense on Pinterest okay or however you collect your recipes together so that you can reference them easily Does that make sense it's super easy okay so I'm gonna recap one more time first when you're getting a meal plan ready you're gonna go ahead and figure out by your calendar of things you have to do for that week that you're preparing for what night is going to be special so this is gonna be our leftover night because we're gonna be home late that night and I'm not gonna have time to cook dinner so we're just gonna eat everything that we have made at the beginning of the week and just eat the rest of that for for our dinner that night. So just go through that step number one, figuring out your schedule. Step number two is taking an inventory. Go through your pantry, your freezer, your fridge, figure out what you wanna get rid of and use up, figure out what you have, and then write that down so you can prepare your meal plan from that. Then you're gonna gather your recipes, go on Pinterest, make sure you have them separated so they're easily organized and easy to find. And you're also gonna pull your family, ask them what they want to eat. And then you're gonna start filling in your list of meals for the week. And again, I separate mine into proteins. So before I fill in my actual dishes, I'm gonna say I want beef this night, chicken, pork, turkey this night, beef and chicken again. Okay, that makes it easier for some people. What other people do is they will say, I want Italian this night, Chinese this night, you know, American this night, upside down dinner this night, whatever. So that makes it easier for people to find recipes. Okay, don't stress out about it. Your body's not gonna say, hey, I had this seven days ago and I don't want it tonight. Like, don't worry about that. Just eat it if, if it makes life easier and you like it. Who cares if you ate it last week? Oh, I don't know, I'm just not like that, so whatever. And then you're gonna fill in your meal for the week. When you do that, you're gonna look at your recipes. Again, make sure you have all the ingredients, whatever you need. You're gonna write down, take to the store. That's all she wrote. But I'm gonna give you some tips also. Don't buy anything that's not on your list when you're grocery shopping. If you're worried about your budget and you have to stick to a strict, strict budget, don't buy anything that's not on your list, okay? Because I want you to be able to use it that week and I want you not to break your budget, okay? But what I do, especially with meat, if something's on sale, say that chicken, chicken breasts are 99 cents a pound, which is a really good deal, right? But you have to buy a ton of it. Maybe if it's not on my list to buy that day, I'll buy it and then put it in the freezer. And then next week, what do I do? I make a meal plan out of that. Does that make sense? But that's only if you have extra money. And that way you're saving money if you're using it by purchasing it in the bulk for the sale of that week. Cause maybe next week it'll be back to $1.99. This one I really like, but let's say you shop at the same place all the time. If they have a flyer that goes out in the mail, did you know that you can sign up for that flyer sometimes and get it ahead of time before everybody else gets it. So if it comes in the paper on a Sunday, sometimes you will get it on a Thursday or Friday before, and that might help you plan, let's say chicken's on sale and you see that it's gonna be on sale. You can plan your meals around whatever's on sale. But if you don't have that information ahead of time, just go ahead and plan it regularly. And you can always change if you want to. This isn't set in stone, but I'm just trying to keep you on budget and on track and less stress as far as grocery shopping. The other thing that I do a lot of, I love chicken and beef, like I told you. So let's say I'm making the tacos and the lasagna that week. Sometimes when I'm browning the taco meat, I'll do all of the meat, all of the ground beef, all four pounds of it, save two of the pounds for the lasagna. You know what I mean? Kind of killed two birds with one stone. If you've got something in the oven, let's say you're putting chicken in the oven for two different nights, one's a Caesar salad and I don't know, one's chicken parm. Go ahead and take those chicken breasts split them up, make your chicken parm, but then also cook the chicken for the chicken salad ahead of time. 
so that you don't have to do cooking every single night. That's another great thing that I love doing. I do a lot of cooking on Sunday and I'll freeze a lot of it or put it in the refrigerator. I say the rule is like, you better eat it by the day five. Sometimes that helps a lot too. So think about that when you're trying to save time with your meal prep. Okay, and then the last, I think I already mentioned this, is when you're making something, let's say that your family loves tacos as well and you got kiddos in school, make a bunch of it. If they'll eat it for a day leftover in their lunch, that's like a huge lifesaver. I don't know, I hate making lunches. I hate cooking in general. So that's why I'm passionate about finding ways around it, <laughs> doing it the easier way. But yeah, make meals. If you wanna make double batches, if you wanna make two lasagnas, throw one in the freezer that you just have to warm up at a later date, that's awesome. That's how you can make life easier without having to take like a whole day. I used to do this too, we, I was part of a meal group, I guess, and we would make meals for an entire day, like all day long, prep these freezer meals. And it worked out great, but man, it took a whole day. It was a mess, I had to have my husband watch the kids, and it was just, it was hard. So I recommend if you can, just do it as you go. Or if you wanna spend a whole day, that's fine too. But that's how I do it. I try to cook at least two meals at a time. That helps a lot with time and money as well. So I hope you can get out there and make a meal planning calendar that's super duper easy, right? And no stress, no stress. I don't want you to stress out about this. I want this to be something that helps you, not adds to the chaos of your life. And again, if you need time to figure this all out, you're like, Erin, this sounds great, but I have no time to do this. Like. No time, I totally hear you. And that's why I created findyourfreetime.com. That's my training, my free training, 20 minutes long, five steps to simplifying your schedule, prioritizing it so that you are the most productive throughout the day. It's a super easy trick, but I, I wanna share it with everybody. And then automating your schedule every day so you know exactly what it is you're gonna do, the order that you do that, and you don't forget anything again. But best of all, you find one to two hours every single day that you can devote to whatever you want to after you finish your to-do list. Okay, that's what happened to me, and I wanna share it with you. So God bless, and until then, head to findyourfreetime.com. I will meet you there. Head over now. Go ahead and subscribe, subscribe. Oops, hold on, I got arm. <laughs> I don't wanna lift my arms that far, Gary. Let's try that again.